Okay, so it's a rainy day here in New York, so no real world test today, but I haven't done one of these in a while. Let's do a best of. And in this one, we're going to take the best Wi-Fi 6 mesh routers for every scenario. Now, I already did a best mesh Wi-Fi routers video, and I also already did a best Wi-Fi 6 routers video. But both technologies have matured to the point now where you can actually find a router that gives you the benefits of both. So things that Wi-Fi 6 brings, like faster speeds, better handling of networks with a larger number of connected devices, better encryption, etc. You can actually check out my full decoder episode on what Wi-Fi 6 is here at the link below if you want a deeper dive. But then also combined with the modularity and better range of mesh networks now, which I also have another decoder episode on, which I'll leave a link below. The only question is now, which mesh Wi-Fi 6 router do you buy? Well, I bought a ton of them and tested them all out. And I think now I have a good list of four for various different scenarios and budgets. First up, we have the TP-Link Deco X20 AX1800 Wi-Fi 6 mesh system, which is easily the least expensive option and the cheapest way for you to get the benefits of mesh and Wi-Fi 6 in your home. Full disclosure, I bought all the routers on this list myself, except for this one, which TP-Link actually sent over. Now, when you buy the Deco X20, it comes with three nodes that can cover up to 5,800 square feet and easily handle up to 150 devices connected at once. You can also save even more and get a two unit set for even less if you don't need that much coverage. Now, the units are also small and they don't look ridiculous like some, so placing them around your house isn't too much of a chore. Also, we have two gigabit ethernet ports on each node, so you can use any of them connected to your modem and still have a free ethernet port on that unit. Plus, every other unit can have two other ethernet devices connected to it. So long as you don't mind, it's obviously scattering them around your house. Now it also includes WPA3 encryption, which is a newer standard in Wi-Fi 6 compared to the usual WPA2 that we see. It has an app that's intuitive and easy to help you get set up. And you even get a lifetime subscription to TP-Link's own security and any virus software, which is included, which is cool, whether you feel like using it or not. Now for speed, it has an AX1800 rating. So peak throughput is about 1.8 gigabits per second. If you want a bit more range, a bit more speed, with AX6600 and a 6.6 .6 gigabit per second throughput. Also with tri-band for a dedicated backhaul and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, then you can step it up to the TP-Link Deco X90 AX6600 mesh system and just for a little bit more money. By the way, I'll leave links below to the best prices that I can find on each of the routers in this video. For the TP-Link devices, since they sent them over, they also offered to give me a discount code for any of you guys that wanted to check it out through the link below. So that's there for a limited time and just thought that was nice of them. Now next up, we have the Netgear Orbi Wi-Fi 6 router modem combo plus mesh extender kit called the CBK752. And it's good for people who are using cable internet that want an all-in-one solution. For the styling, I'm not really a fan as they are larger in like volume wise than any of the others on this list, but they are at least smaller than other Orbi systems that I've used in the past, so that's nice. But they do at least make up for some of that with having tri-band support with a five gigahertz band dedicated to backhaul between the main router and its included satellite mesh unit. And it's also the only one on this list that has a built-in DOCSIS 3.1 cable modem, which can support up to 10 gigabit per second internet connections, AKA most likely whatever speed you probably have from your cable internet provider. So with all the others on this list, you'll need to use your normal cable modem that you most likely received from your ISP or internet service provider, and then plug the router into it to use it. Whereas with this one, you can actually completely replace your cable modem router combo or whatever you got from your ISP and plug the cable in directly from the wall into this main router unit and you're good to go. Now you will have to check with your ISP on how to do that and it'll only work for cable internet and not like fiber, for example, but most cable providers support it and it's not too hard to do. An interesting side benefit of this though is that most cable ISPs charge you a monthly rental fee for your modem, which you may or may not be aware of. But if you replace the modem and send it back to them, then you can save that money every month. Just something to think about. Now beyond that, the two unit system has a range of about 5,000 square feet, the aforementioned tri-band support with dedicated Wi-Fi 6 backhaul, which is great. And it has an AX4200 rating. So you have a theoretical max throughput speed of 4.2 gigabits per second. For ports, we have four ethernet ports on the main unit, in addition to that coax port for the incoming cable internet. And we have two ethernet ports on the satellite unit. So 
this might be a better option for you if you have a ton of things that you need to plug into the router next to your modem, since you'll get four for that. Now, obviously pricing for this one is a bit higher than the TP-Link as expected, but again, I'll leave the best prices that I could find on it below. Now for something a bit faster, theoretically speaking at least, and a bit more coverage, we now turn to the Linksys MX-10 Velop, which I can only guess is short for envelope, as in it like envelops you in Wi-Fi? I don't know. Anyway, regardless, it also has tri-band support with a dedicated five gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 backhaul between the two units that it comes with. We also have 12 streams of Wi-Fi, a device load of 50 plus, and each of the units can cover up to 3,000 square feet. So this two pack can technically cover 6,000. Now each unit also has five gigabit ethernet ports on it, which is handy if you need to plug in more devices via wired connections. Just keep in mind that one of them will be used for the incoming internet from your current modem on the unit that you place next to that. And as with any of these mesh systems, you can always buy more units if you need to extend coverage. So three would give you 9,000 square feet, four, 12,000, et cetera. I also personally like the styling of them as they feel super minimalistic, which is kind of my style. They have clean lines, etc., And I don't mind having them out in the open. They also, kind of look like the new Xbox, which is weird. Now, their biggest downside, of course, is the price, as it's so far the highest on this list by a bit. Again, I'll leave the best prices I can find below, but also when you see the last option, this will look cheaper by comparison at least. Either way, though, probably a good option for people who need extra coverage, but they want less nodes, they just don't have places to plug them in, whatever reason. Maybe you're doing a lot of streaming and gaming, and you might even need to plug in a decent amount via Ethernet. Which brings us to the last, and easily the most expensive on this list. The Amplify Alien Wi-Fi 6 Plus Mesh Point System. Now, despite the highest price on this list by a decent margin, I had to include it, because it's probably the most high-tech interface-wise and definitely the most distinguished looks wise. The box literally describes the units as, quote, showcase pieces in your home. Now we have a matte black design, which automatically stands out in a world of white ones. And we have a ring of LEDs at the bottom with a greenish glow, as well as a large LCD touchscreen on the front. Now that touchscreen will show you things like your internet and network speeds, devices that are connected, which even has icons specific to certain devices like iPhones, which is interesting, and a whole host of other interesting, if not that useful information, but also useful information. Like if there's a software update, for example, if the internet goes down or a new device connects that you don't recognize somehow, etc. Frankly, I just like the idea of it being something other than, you know, blinking lights. Now, if you'd rather it be more subtle though, you can easily change what is displayed and even turn off the display entirely as well as the LED. Now their app is also pretty intuitive and equally visually interesting and does similar things to all the other ones on this list. The one interesting exception is that Ubiquity, the company that makes it, also gives you a free VPN service called Amplify Teleport. Essentially, you can then open the Teleport app on your iPhone or Android device. It currently doesn't work for laptops just yet. And it'll send all of the internet traffic through your home network with extra encryption on top of it. So this is good for hiding your info while surfing, but might also be useful if you're say traveling and want to access Netflix from your home country while in another one, as apps on your device will think that they're being used in your home. For specs on this, we have tri-band as well, but there's no dedicated Wi-Fi 6 backhaul, which is interesting, unlike the, some of the others on this list. It has one five gigahertz Wi-Fi 6, one five gigahertz Wi-Fi 5, and a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi 6 band, and by default, dynamically switches between them as needed. So whatever devices connect, it'll choose the appropriate network for that device. Now you could turn the Wi-Fi 6 five gigahertz band into a dedicated backhaul, which would give you a little more throughput, at least when accessing from the satellite. But then the only other five gigahertz band you have for devices isn't Wi-Fi 6, which kind of defeats the purpose of getting a Wi-Fi 6 router, but not a huge detriment, just something to note if you're doing a lot of stuff from the further away node that requires a lot of throughput. Now, theoretically, speaking of throughput, we have about 7.7 .7 gigabits per second, and the two units can cover up to 6,000 square feet together. There you guys, the best mesh Wi-Fi 6 routers that I could find. Hope uh, you guys found that helpful. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video, what you think of the routers that I chose. If you have any other ones that you particularly like, let us know in the comments below. It'll help some other people out as well. If you like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like to see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.